huge news out of Penn State University that a native, beautiful, pollinator-friendly plant is actually a death trap to spotted lanternflies. And today I'm going to go over the research and give you all the details that you need to protect your own yard. Let's dig in. If you live in the Mid-Atlantic or the Northeast, then you know all about the spotted lanternfly, a beautiful but super destructive insect that was recently introduced to the U.S. and has been wreaking havoc, especially in farms and vineyards. Spotted lanternflies feed on grapevines, fig trees, raspberries, some ornamental plants, and many, many fruit trees. They suck all the sap out and leave behind a sticky mess that promotes mold growth, which ultimately can kill your plants. In some areas, they've practically devastated vineyards and winemaking operations have come to a standstill. We can't have that. But here's where it gets interesting. Penn State is doing research through a grant that found that a native plant is able to kill those nasty little spotted lanternflies. They had anecdotal records that people that planted milkweed in their yards were finding the dead bodies of the spotted lanternfly at the base of the plant. So they decided to study it. Currently, they're testing three different types of milkweed and how their toxicity leads to the death of spotted lanternflies. So far, they've tested common milkweed and it was found to kill 60 to 80% of spotted lanternflies and that one only has medium toxicity. Butterfly weed has the lowest toxicity of all of the milkweeds but this one is currently in trial and swamp milkweed has the highest concentration of toxicity. Winner winner chicken dinner. So they are currently testing this to see if it has an even higher effect maybe even more than 80 percent of a death rate for the spotted lanternfly. It's interesting to note that it doesn't just kill the bug while it's in certain stages. The milkweed that they studied killed 60 to 80% of the spotted lanternfly for both nymphs and adults. Milkweed contains cardiac glycosides, which makes it toxic to the spotted lanternflies, and they were feasting on it even when they had some big, juicy grapevines right next door. And according to the research, the milkweed killed the bugs in 24 hours. And planting milkweed gives you more than just pest control. It provides essential food for monarch caterpillars and nectar for many pollinators. It's drought tolerant, low maintenance once established. It has deep roots which improve soil structure to help prevent erosion. It adds height, color, and texture to your garden. And unlike sticky traps, it works passively. There's no maintenance and no harm to pollinators. If you don't currently have milkweed growing in your garden and you'd like to protect your plants from the spotted lanternfly, you can certainly run out to your local nursery or maybe even a big box store and buy some plants. But if you'd like to plant a bunch of them like I want to, then you can also grow them from seed. I had previously purchased these seeds before the information from Penn State came out, so I already had them in my fridge. But if you don't have milkweed seeds, you may be able to get a good deal on them right now. I know my local nursery sells their leftover seed packets for like 25 cents a piece this time of year and then into September, so definitely check your local nurseries. If you have to order seeds, you might be able to find them on discount now. If not, you want to order them two to three months before you're ready to start them because these seeds need cold stratification. To cold stratify your seeds, you're going to wrap them in a very lightly dampened paper towel. I mean, very lightly, like almost not even wet. And put them in a Ziploc bag in your refrigerator for 30 to 45 days. That's going to allow the seed to germinate when you put it in your seed tray. Once you select your seed tray, I like these green ones, you want to fill it with dampened seed starting mix. Think like a sponge that's already been wrung out. So damp, but not soaking wet. These seeds require light to germinate. So you don't want to bury the seeds. You just want to tap them down lightly into the soil and then cover them with a humidity dome. They should begin to germinate in seven to 10 days, but it will take eight to 10 weeks before they're ready to plant out. 
So you should start your seeds in your seed trays eight weeks or so before your last frost date. So for most of us in the Mid-Atlantic or the Northeast, that means you want to start your seeds in January or February. So you want to have them on order in October or November. Because milkweed seeds require cold stratification, it makes them an excellent candidate for winter sowing. To winter sow your seeds, you need a clear plastic container with a lid. You want to have holes on the top and on the bottom. The holes on the top allow the snow and the rain to get in, and the holes on the bottom are going to allow the excess moisture to drain out. You want to fill your container with four inches or more of good seed starting mix, and while your seeds are tucked away in their little cocoon, they will experience a freeze and thaw cycle, which will cold stratify them. So Mother Nature can do the work for you. Winter sown seeds will not start to germinate until temperatures start to warm up. Having the lid on will create a little bit of a greenhouse effect, so your seeds will be protected from predators and from really cold weather, and they'll start to germinate a little sooner than if they were in the ground, but they won't germinate as fast as the seeds that you grow in seed trays in your home. So if you want to have milkweed ready to plant at your last frost date, you're better off starting your seeds in trays indoors, but you may want to consider succession planting. So doing a tray or two in January or February, and then following that a few weeks later, you can either winter sow your seeds or do a few more trays. That way when you plant out your milkweed in the spring, if it gets decimated by spotted lanternflies, you'll have another crop ready to go. My plan is to plant out my seedlings of milkweed early enough that the spotted lantern flies haven't started to hatch yet. I'm hoping to establish them and have them put on a good root system so that they will be able to kill the spotted lantern flies but still survive. Now most types of milkweed do not flower the first year from seed. Most of the time they flower in year two. If you start them very early, you might get lucky with just a couple of flowers, but the good news is you don't need flowers on your milkweed plants in order for them to kill spotted lantern flies. The toxin that runs through them is in the leaves and the stems. So even without flowers, they will be deadly for your spotted lantern flies. It's like your own little milkweed army. Just keep in mind that like milkweed is toxic to the spotted lantern fly, it's also toxic to us. The leaves, the stems, and the sap that comes from them is toxic to humans and livestock and pets. So if you're working with this, you want to be careful and you definitely want to wear gloves. But of course, that toxicity is exactly why it kills the spotted lanternfly. I'll be following the research out of Penn State closely, and I'll post updates as soon as I hear anything. So don't forget to subscribe so that you'll know that information as soon as it comes out. And if you have milkweed growing in your garden or you plan to start it, tell me about it in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching today. Have a great day.